Welcome to the madhouse. <laughs> What is going on, ladies and gentlemen? My name is Anthony Zaragoza, and I host a little podcast called the Miles One Podcast. You may or may not have heard of it. And this you is my co- heard of it. This is my co-host. What's your name? My name is Sam. This is Sam. My name is Jeff. We're gonna take a little break from being very professional for once in the podcast, and we're gonna we're gonna we're gonna interview one of the newest members of the Night's Horror family. She debuted on the channel. She's actually been around on the channel. She does all. She comes to all the live streams. Yeah, she's a she's a, a fan, number one fan, probably a loyal follower. But lately, uh, I had brought her on to do the thumbnails. That's why the thumbnails look ten times better now. Yeah, a hundred, a hundred. And her name is Celine Martinez. How are you doing, Celine? What's up, Jake Paulers? Welcome back to my channel, Jay Paulers. Okay, Logan, pa- Logan, You're, bro. You just immediately okay. get, you just gotten fired. <laughs> We're gonna end this. No, I'm just kidding. Uh, welcome to the welcome to the podcast. Welcome to the channel. Um, so before we go any further, um, you're gonna hear some clicking noises in the background. That's because I'm switching back and forth to screens, my screen and Celine's screen. That way you can see us video, and then you can see Celine as well. There's Celine right there. There's us. Hey. There's Celine. And there's us. There's us. And then there's Celine. God, I wasn't expecting <laughs> that one. Anyway, um, so we're gonna be, we're gonna introduce Celine. We're gonna talk to her a little bit about um, just just to get to know her a little bit. Uh, her some of her favorite horror movies, her horror influences. Uh, talk a little bit about some news and uh, yeah, uh, fun fact. And if you guys haven't put two and two together already, uh, Samuel and Celine are brother and sister. So if there's a little allegedly, sh- I don't know if it's proven yet. If there's some yeah, shit talking. If there's some shit talking in this uh, podcast, uh, go with it because you may never see something like that again on the channel. So here we go, Celine. Again, welcome to the podcast, and uh, we're gonna get to know you a little bit today. Um, so, Celine, mm-hmm. what do you like about the channel? I've never seen anything that you guys do. I'm just kidding. No, I just um, you guys are very transparent with your opinions. It doesn't seem like you give a fuck what people think. And I kind of like that. Can I curse? You are more than welcome to curse. Yeah. um, We're going to pull all our sponsors for this video since we have a million of them. Yep. So you can do what you want. (laughs) Dope. Um, Yeah, just like I like that it's very focused on one subject. I think that's dope. And you guys are passionate about what you do. So that's why I start. And plus, you're my brother's lover. So I had to to watch it. (laughs) I have to support my brother and his romances. Yeah, so uh, it's getting pretty serious. Like seven podcasts now. Seven, but is it been, you been seven already? <laughs> I don't know how many it's been. Twenty-two. Was that when I started? Twenty-two or twenty-three? I don't know. Whatever. Um, I think what really, it, it, uh, what really brought uh Celine to the channel too is uh, she would always join our live streams. Is that right, Celine? Yeah, I did. Uh, I do enjoy your live streams. They're very funny. The live. I just streams. like messing with Sam. Yeah, it's, it's messing hobby. with Sam. That's it's always fun to do. Day in the life. Um, so if you guys haven't uh, noticed by now, in the last like three or two videos that I've put up, the thumbnails have gotten increasingly better. And that's because I am not a wizard with Photoshop. I suck at Photoshop. And because, yeah, I, I think I barely passed uh, graphic design. And that's because You barely passed high school, let's be honest. I did. I really did. Um, and Celine, uh, messaged me like, what was it? A week or two ago. And she asked like, Hey, you know, uh, you, if you want, I got a lot of free time. You, I, I could do your thumbnails for you. And, uh, I said, yeah, let's see what you can do. I mean, I, I they're probably going to be better than what I do. So, I mean, but what she brought to me was like 10 times better than what I was ever expecting. Honestly, definitely. And uh, she, the first thumbnail she's done for us was the interview we had with uh, Jackie from 
uh, Fractured Compass Productions. Yeah, that was a fun podcast. Fun podcast with the Not Scary Farm um, scare actor. And she came up with two very iconic um, thumbnails. One of them did not get used, but I will put on the screen just to show you what her talents are. But the one that did get used was the one, of course, it was like white or gray with like the person coming through. Yeah. Um, but I did like the other one. So I'm going to show it on the screen just because I want people to see what it looks like and see what such a talented person this this Celine is. She is amazing. This Celine. This, this Celine. Celine. Sure. This Celine. <laughs> Um, this creature over here. This, this, yeah. I just want you. I want you to. I want you to see her amazing work because she has. Uh, she's done some really good stuff, um, and I feel like with all the videos I make, I'm gonna be slamming her with just projects left and right. I'm down for it. I'm fun employed right now. She's down for it. I'm fun employed. Is that what you said? Yeah, I got to like level 100 on Fortnite. Like I'm having a great time over here. Level 100 on Fortnite. I should give you my login so you can give me a battle pass. <laughs> so uh Celine, what uh so obviously of course the channel if you guys haven't realized by now it talks about horror if you guys expected a logan paul type channel you, well, you're obviously in the wrong place bro i'm i'm logan all the way bro you're logan all the way you can just leave the office now <laughs> <laughs> um but uh Celine, so i want to know what are some of your favorite horror movies it follows is one of my top. I just saw that actually like this year. It's um, fun about a STD demon that follows this bitch. Um, and the cinematography and it's just gorgeous. It has really good scenes that are just like you 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 forget that you're getting scared for a minute just because you look at the screen and you're like, holy fuck, that's beautiful. Uh, I like Chucky, little slasher. Child's uh, play. I like that. He uh, does look like he eats ass. Um, <laughs> <laughs> My boyfriend made me say that. <laughs> <laughs> Which other ones do I like? I like so many. I obviously love all the Final Destinations. Um, although, like, I really gore is not my thing I, at all, just because it makes me sick. But those ones, I just think, I, I just it's a good time. Um, yeah. Nice, uh, nice. I know you like dragging me to hell. I don't remember that one. That's when I we really saw it at the the ghetto theater. Oh yeah. <laughs> Wait, is that the one where we heard the clapping in the back of the, <laughs> the back yeah. Of the <laughs> yeah. Um, and then what else is there? Gosh, I love them all. Uh, Final Destination, uh, for me has always been one of those horror movies where it's like I I I, I get true paranoia. It's the reason why I don't like to go flying. It's the reason why I don't like going on roller coasters sometimes. And it's every because time I'm in line, I think of that scene. I'm like, fuck. <laughs> I do too. I really do too. Yeah. And I shouldn't be thinking like that because it's probably going to happen one day. And I hate to say it, but, you know, if it's my time, it's my time. Yeah. <laughs> but, um, yeah, Final Destination, though, they're, they're really well put together movies. I like the concept of it. Um, and the deaths are pretty creative as well. Uh, yeah. I thought you liked all the clown movies. Fuck clowns. <laughs> so yeah, Sammy was telling me you're scared of clowns. Yeah, people, like, once they found out, like, random numbers would just text me with pictures of clowns. I'm still, like, certain Sam was behind it somehow. No, it wasn't was, me. Like, my sister hates clowns. It could have been one of my friends, too. But, um, yeah, I hate clowns. I'm kind of getting over it now, but, like, I, like, not Scary Farm and Horror Nights and stuff. I'd go with my friend Eric. And he'd whisper to the clowns, like, hey, she's scared of clowns. And they just fucking circled me. Like, there was one point at Not Scary Farm in the boardwalk area. You know how that's always clowns? Yeah. Um, where it's, like, by the, that statue um, kind of in front of the arcade. Uh, there was just, like, this clown. And he just, like, was following me. And so, like, my instinct was to just crouch. So I just <laughs> went on the clown fetal position. And before I knew it, there was, like, five of them around me. And they're all saying my name. And I was just, like, crying. It was very bad. Uh, you uh you did better than me the first year I went. I uh I went in one maze, lasted four hours, and I told my dad, "Let's get out of here." Really? Dang, no. you, I thought I was bad. At least my first time, I I made it through a few mazes. Where did you go? I was. This was in 2008, Sammy. This was not scary for me. It was like the first time I've been to any haunt. Same. I when like, I I was in like tw I was in like eighth grade though when I went. I think or something. Yeah, I was like only in I like. Was like 
I think I was like eight my first time. I was about like her age. Maybe yeah. a little bit older. I was fucking terrified though. Yeah. <laughs> but um, it was really fun. So you have you, you mentioned Horror Nights and Not Scary Farm. Uh, what kind of events have you been to in the past? Like as far as, um, you know, all the SoCal stuff and all that. Or if there's any haunts out in Arizona. I don't know if you if there is any out there. But like, you know, yeah. there's, there's a bunch like Not Scary Farm, Queen Mary. Which ones have you been to? I've done Scary Farm. Um, as I mentioned, I've done everything, even their little skate room. That was really fun. I've been to the Queen Mary. I've been to Universal. Um, in Arizona, I've been to 13th Floor. That one was really cool. And Fear Farm, which is really fun, too. Are those the the interactive ones where they touch you and stuff? Uh, at 13th Floor, they can touch you. I didn't know that. I took my boyfriend there for the first time this year. <laughs> and I told him, I'm like, no, they're not allowed to touch you. Don't worry. And the first thing that one does is go like that to his face. <laughs> <laughs> but uh yeah so uh th- that's cool because uh, i think we're trying to plan a trip uh horror night season to get sammy to go get a thousand and subscribers even if we don't get a thousand subscribers i'm gonna buy your ticket i'm okay. forced for you to go okay um go for my birthday go for when, when's your birthday september 30th september 30th i'll be 25 i want to get the vip passes so the no vip problems. Or That's the, f- the worst part. Or we just get front of the line. We don't even have to give VIP. I want to do like the whole backstage stuff. I think that'd be dope. I don't think they do it at Horror Nights. I thought they do. I'm not sure. I'll have to look it up. Um, but they have like an exclusive area. And it I know they there. do a buffet. And you get like early access to some stuff. Yeah. But I don't know about. I think that's like during the day only. But that yeah, I've been wanting to do VIP for a while. Now that I have a car painted, we'll see what happens. Looks like I'm gonna have to use the credit card. We shall see. Yep. Um, <laughs> so yeah, I mean, I, I, you know, we're, obviously we're all a little bit. There's some. We all like horror some way, you know. I mean, whether it be from uh, different me. events, movies. Uh, I'm getting Sam into to horror a little bit, little by little. Um, the last horror movie we saw was Deadly Crush. But before that was The Prodigy. Yeah. Mm-hmm. Uh, or Hazel. So we were kind of cracking up throughout that movie. Um, but it's also funny to see Sam kind of like get scared and stuff in the theater. Um, and I wish I can... Uh, <laughs> it's okay. I embrace it. I, I, I wish I can record him in the theater. I might have to start recording him if I haven't never seen a... If we have never seen a movie that like Quiet Place or something, I might have to record him just to see his reactions. I think that would make for some good content. That'd be really funny. Yeah, it was bad. It'd be a good vlog. It would be a very funny one. Um, so Celine, are you are you the ultimate horror fan though, or no? Probably not. I don't have a good memory. <laughs> really? <everything>. Yeah, <laughs> I, I probably I've seen a lot of horror movies, but um, I forget everything. So. So okay, I'll I'll list off some horror movies. You tell me if you've seen them or not. All right. So, how about The Exorcist? Of course. The Shining? Yes. How about Halloween? Which one? Uh, let's go with the first one. Yeah. Uh, what about Friday the 13th, 1 and 2? Yeah. Okay. Yeah. Uh, Nightmare on Elm Street? Yes. What about... Okay, you said you've seen all the... Have you seen all the Child's Plays or just the first couple? The first couple, I didn't see like the bride or anything. Okay, what about Trick or Treat? No, I don't think I did. That's a cult I classic. Might have. That's uh, yeah. about a boy named Sam. Sam. <laughs> Who? Sam. Uh, Sam. Um, Sam. But uh, that's about a boy, a little like kind of like demon boy who like does a bunch of stuff. You see, it's a it's like, like an anthology movie in a way. Yeah, it's like, like a bunch of stories. Three different stories. That's a good one. Um and one of my all time favorites, American Werewolf in London. No, I haven't seen that one. That's a good one. And my all time favorite. Let me let me say this for him, Mister uh, Killer Clowns from Outer Space. Fuck that one. What? <laughs> that's the best horror movie ever. So, th- and this is what I wanted. That's why I wanted to bring this one up because, um, there's rumor that Killer Clowns from Outer Space. It's coming to HHN 2019 this year. No way. I'll, I'll totally go through that maze, but so, I'm going to fall <laughs> a few times. Uh, 
that is one of my all-time favorite horror movies. I've mentioned it time and time again on the channel. Um, I was very jealous last year when Orlando got it, and just as a scare zone. And if it comes to the event, I probably will go multiple. I probably will buy a frequent fair pass. Yeah, that's what he said. So I'm gonna hold him to his word. If it comes so to I make the him event, waste his money. I'll buy a freaking fear pass. I, it's actually not a waste of money. I'd be saving money. How much oh. is it? A frequent fear pass go anywhere from... Uh, well, they introduced one where you can get a frequent fear pass and get front of the line every time you go. Oh, wow. But I think Ooh. I think that one's like somewhere from 269 to 300. Oh, that's not bad. Yeah. Or maybe more. I don't know. Um, and then they have, of course, the regular one that goes for about, I think, 169. Um, so that one would probably be the one I get. I would wait the lines, but then I'd get er, get there early and do the early access and stuff like that. Um, oh, that's not bad whatsoever. Yeah. I think that's worth it. Yeah, so it's like... And then Knott's does... I know I know Knott's does a season pass for, like, you can go every night and stuff like that if you really wanted to for uh, their their haunt. Um, I heard that they've gotten a lot shittier, though, over the years. Like, they're not as good as they once were. So I went last year, 2018, of course, um, and... I actually enjoyed myself. Uh, there was a couple mazes I didn't go through, but I enjoyed myself. I did like, however, they, they introduced two new mazes, which were really cool. One was Dark Entities, and one was The Depths. And The Depths was really cool. The Depths, um, it was supposed to be like an underwater kind of adventure, but you see all these sea creatures and stuff like that. Uh, but oh, they, cool. they had this one scene where it was all like these like lasers that went like up to like your waist and they were all green and they had fog covering it everywhere. So it looked like you were underwater and they had like the creatures like slowly pop up and you wouldn't see them and they'd pop up and like get in your face and then like go back like if they were sea creatures. Um, that effect yeah, is really farm has that. It's really dope. Yeah, that effect looks like it's coming around now and it might be more frequent at more haunts. Um, I could see them using it like at Queen Mary and and stuff like that. Oh yeah. Like I think Queen Mary would be very perfect for that. Um, yeah, especially the whole underwater theme that they got. Yeah, that would be perfect. And then um, Dark Entities. So Dark Entities was really cool because it was like a cross between um, Alien and kind of like uh, Alien and the Thing is how I put it. Um, because the alien part comes from you're supposed to be in a spaceship in outer space and one of the alien subjects gets loose and it's aboard the ship. Uh, the thing part is the way the alien looked reminded me of the thing. Did you just oh, dab no. it? Hold on. Did you just dab at each other? Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Because I saw the little dab in her screen and the little screen and then like when I turned around like the last minute, I saw like your hand go down. <laughs> of course. <laughs> I think we're gonna have to get some t-shirts made of these two <laughs> like knights of horror who we came for the real show the martinez's <laughs> so uh yeah um all right well let's get to the news portion of the yes news. news sammy what do we got for the first thing in news today oh uh, yeah let's i think we should start with let's start with black mirror black mirror so well, well, we'll do Netflix in general. We got we got two big announcements. Two big announcements for Netflix. Uh, Black Mirror. I have not watched every episode. However, I have picked and choose some of the episodes that I've watched. I think I'm gonna go back and watch everything. Yeah, you got to start with the first episode with the pig. I've seen. If that you're one. really a fan of Black Mirror, I've seen that one. You can't say you like Black Mirror without watching that episode. I have seen that one. Celine, what do you think about Black Mirror? I love it. Um, I've seen every episode. Did you guys see the Bandersnatch thing? I did it four times. I haven't done it. I did it four it's times, so... and I've only gotten two of the endings. Two of the times I've played it, I've gotten put back in the same situation, and it won't let me move a different situation. Therefore, I can never... I'm in a never-ending fucking loop with that damn movie. <laughs> I, I've gotten every um, ending at my last job. I was bored one day, and I just played it for hours. I might um, I might just I might just go on YouTube and watch them all just to fucking... I'm done with that fucking movie. They're freaking good. Like, some endings are just a trip. But they did really good. That was like, I really want to see more things like that. Like, the interactive, it just like, it was a perfect mix between a video game and a movie. It was really good. The interactive uh, part I thought was really cool. Um, the One of the endings I got, uh, spoilers ahead for those who haven't done it yet, but one of the endings I got, which was not a bad ending. So the two endings I've really gotten were, uh, I, I killed him. I killed him off. 
uh, in the therapy mm-hmm. office. So he went back and then he got on the train with his mom and then he was in the therapy office and he just ended up dead. That was a good ending, yeah. I was just tripping out like, oh, shit, he's dead. Okay. <laughs> dead. Just dead. Um, the, the second ending I've, I've ever gotten, and this is the one that kept going on repeat and I couldn't get out of this loop because uh, I was forced to kill the dad over and over again, was oh, yeah. um, the ending where he kills his dad. He goes on and finishes the game Banner Snatch. And it becomes a huge success, but then he ends up getting caught for killing his dad and goes to jail. And then they reveal that someone is making the Bandersnatch movie based off this kid's life. And it they were like, oh, well, we heard a rumor that you guys signed with Netflix and you're going to be putting it on Netflix. I was like, okay, I mean, you guys don't need to promote the movie. I'm already freaking watching the damn thing. You don't, need to promote it. <laughs> you don't need to promote it more. I'm already fucking playing the damn game. You already sold me. But, uh. Technical error. Technical difficulties. So we got Black Mirror renewing for its fifth season, if I'm correct. You can't hear me? No. Damn it! (laughs) So Black Mirror season five. Uh, We got some news. I was uh, doing my business today. He was going poop. I was. And like every human being on this world, I was on my phone. I went on IMDb's every page. Every human being? Wow, that's so privileged. You're right. Uh, I was on IMDb, and I watched an interview. Oh, it, it, So the, the video was actually entitled um, Black Mirror Season 5, What We Know So Far. Okay. So basically, the video was basically breaking down the fact that, uh, of course, this is being uh, Black Mirror. Each season is being kept a secret. Um, of course, we we uh, the way they've come out each year, or every year they have come out, it, it, it kind of drops at random. So like the first season came out in 2011, and then the second season came out in 2013. The um, the third season came out in 2016. The fourth season came out in 2017, and then Bandersnatch came out in 2018. Yeah. Now they said Bandersnatch was actually supposed to be a season. Um, but they wanted to make it to a movie. So they were filming Banner Snatch in season four back to back, but that's why Banner Snatch took so long to come out. And they kind of just dropped it like a week before it came out. Like they dropped the trailer and just boom, it just came out. I didn't even know there was a trailer for it. I just knew it dropped. It was a trailer and they kind of dropped it unexpectedly. Kind of like uh, the marketing strategy they use for um, the Cloverfield Paradox. Yeah, where they were just like, it's coming soon. And right very the, soon. Right after the big game. And yeah. then... Um, so they kind of just dropped it unexpectedly, and Netflix kind of has a tendency of doing that with the shows because, like, when they promoted Punisher, like they released a trailer like right the week before it came out. Yeah, they're very much like, "Here, something's coming." Yeah, and something's coming last minute. Um, and if they really want to put a promotional into something like the, for example, the new movie, The Dirt, the Motley Crue biopic, um, that's coming out March twenty second. So they kind of did it a little month ahead of time just to get it going, to get it talked about, and stuff like that. Um, evidently, though, they had a um, an interview with the creator of Black Mirror, and he said that uh, he doesn't know when the release date is, and he said that he wrote an episode that he really liked, but every episode that he writes, he gets into the moment, and there's always like different moments of the episode that he likes. Therefore, uh, he's really excited for this season. He said this is probably going to be the best season yet. Damn. Um, and that's a bold statement. However... Casting news. Now we have noticed the last couple of seasons that we've get, been getting like major U.S. stars coming into the show. Yeah, definitely. It's a um, it's a British show, right? A British show because the first season was a bunch of like really nobodies for us at least. Yeah, like no one I really knew. Um, and then like the second season they had like John Hamm, and then one season they had Wyatt Russell, and they've had Bryce De- Bryce Dallas Howard. Um, so they've had a couple stars. You know, the lead guy from Get Out was on one of the episodes. Oh wow. Um, but, uh, so then, uh, we got some news today, at least of one casting option, or not option, that's been confirmed. She confirmed it on the Howard Stern show, and that is Miley Cyrus is going to be casted in season five. We're going to get the best the of episode. both worlds. Best of both worlds is coming on. Hannah Montana is going to be on Black Mirror. I want to know, I'm curious though, she hasn't acted in a while. Like, it's been a while. She's been focusing on her music career, and I think she got married to, what was it, Liam Hemsworth? So, can you confirm that? I can confirm. Yeah, she did. She did. Okay. <laughs> We're all sitting here like, oh, did she? <laughs> um, but yeah, so she's been, she just got married and she's been focusing on her on her musical career. Um, 
But it's good to see her that she's going to be getting back into acting pretty soon. You know, you could really say that she came in like a wrecking ball and back into acting. I was going to make that joke too. High five. <laughs> With the same person sometimes. <laughs> This is what I gotta deal with in the podcast today. This is what I gotta deal with. All right, but nonetheless, how do you guys feel about Miley Cyrus coming on the show? I love her work. Um, her and Hannah Montana clenches my heart. I remember that episode where she had to choose like if she wanted to be with Jake Ryan. Gets me every time. So I know she has some acting chops. Um, <laughs> No, I'm just excited, especially with her new era, with this new era, how she just like is just really bold and got rid of that whole Disney Channel image. I'm kind of excited to see how she is. And she has done like a few movies. They're mostly romantic comedies. So um, I'm excited to see what kind of role she'll take in that. Especially with Black Mirror, because Black Mirror is looking like more of a Twilight Zone kind of British version of the Twilight yeah. Zone. Well, yeah, I think I think it's going to be interesting to see, obviously, because she has, she has a very interesting accent. And the way she speaks, um, and I think it'll be interesting to see whether or not it'll make it like a U.S. kind of feel for that episode, or if they'll still try to keep the British feel in it. Yeah, because one of the episodes I enjoyed, uh, one of my favorite episodes, it was the pig I, episode, right? Pig episode was disturbing. Uh, <laughs> uh, that that was another thing. Actually, I'm glad you actually brought that up because that was another thing that the creator was talking about on the red carpet was. Are they going to go back to po- politics, especially of what's going on right now? Um, that episode have it heavily done uh, with politics, and uh, they want to know because I guess that's one of the most highest rated episodes they had. Oh, really? I would have never guessed. Yeah, that. I guess it's like one of the like the most talked about episode they've had. Well, I guess most talked about, yeah. Most talked about makes sense, but I guess it was like one of the fan- most fan favorites, um, which I don't get. Uh, one of my two of my favorites, um, the one with Wyatt Russell when he's in the simulator of a whore. The horror simulator. I didn't, I didn't see that one. I thought you seen it. I thought you seen every episode. No, I said I've, I've seen a few episodes. Oh, we'll watch that one. That was a good one. But Wyatt Russell, no, of course. Just... Have you seen that one, Celine? Yeah. So yeah. if any of you know Wyatt Russell, Wyatt Russell, the son of, of course, the late, uh, amazingly talented Kurt Russell, um, he uh, comes out in this episode and basically he signs up for a simulator for a new game that's supposed to be like really scary. And like shit starts going down and stuff like that. It's a really good episode. Is that the one where he gets caught in the uh, the simulator? Yeah. Yes. It's called playtest. Playtest. Yeah. Yeah. And then um, my uh, my on screen crush is in that movie too. Or that, that episode. Um, her name's like Hannah something. Oh, I thought it was one from last night. No, no, no oh, she's hot too. Um, no, I'm talking about the girl. She was in Ant Man and the Wasp. She played the ghost. Oh, okay. Yeah. 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 I think she's beautiful. Um. But that one's my favorite, and then the one where it's like supposed to be making fun of Star Trek. Have you seen that one? I don't think I did. That one uh, has the kid from Breaking Bad. Um, what was his name in the show? I forget his name, but he's like an asshole in that episode, dude. Like, oh, wow. he's like this programmer in the real world, and everybody treats him kind of like shit because he's kind of antisocial and stuff. But yeah. he makes his own re- uh, alternate reality where he's like the captain of the ship, and he treats all of his crew members like shit. Like, but every crew member is someone in the real world. Okay. So he takes their DNA and puts them on and stuff like that. Uh, and that's a really good episode. We'll watch that one too. Um, but I'm really excited for Black Mirror 5. I actually might go and watch all of them, the ones I haven't seen. Um, and usually I've been trying to make it a thing where like every time I go to my uncle's house to spend the night, we watch a couple episodes or we play around a Banner Snatch. But I think yeah. Banner Snatch is kind of out of the picture now because we're both fucking annoyed by that movie. <sighs> I'm so annoyed by that movie. Don't ask to play it either. <laughs> we're not playing it. I wasn't going to ask. Okay, good. If I was going to play it, I would have played it already. But nonetheless, Black Mirror Season 5, that's a little bit of update that we got. Um, Second update. Netflix news. Go ahead and take this one, Sammy. Yeah, definitely. Um, As you guys probably know, I'm a huge fan of this uh, next show we're going to discuss, The Haunting of Hill House. Um, And so we got uh, news that we're getting a second season of it. Um, So it's going to be an anthology called The Haunting. Uh, We haven't really got too much news on what it's going to look like. Um, but I, I think I'm really excited. I know Celine's a huge fan. She's the one that told me to watch The Haunting of Hill House. That I told, told Tony. Um, that I think he told someone else. So I told the, Miguel to watch it. It's, it's been a good show. The season two title is The Haunting of Bly Manor. Oh, so they have a name for it. I didn't realize yeah, that. It's yes. the, the Haunting of Bly Manor. 
And uh, I guess this season, I was talking to one of my uh, co-workers at work. He said that it's that story is way more disturbing than the first season. Oh, wow. And, like, in reality, I guess the, the real story is more disturbing. I was super disturbed by the bent neck lady. Like, that still shocks me when I think about it. Yeah, and then that twist. That was creepy. Yeah. Uh, so, Celine, what do you think about The Haunting? What, what are your thoughts of the show in general? I just loved all the... I just loved it. It's something that I watched in one day. I started it in the morning. Uh, just, I And I just I couldn't stop because every end of the episode was... <sighs> left you breathless and you're like okay i need to see what happens yeah i, I did um, too uh and i remember walking into this sam was like pay attention to even the littlest things and i'm just like okay <laughs> uh so as we were going yeah. on uh sam started we watched the what we watched like the first eight or nine episodes yeah we watched we watched like the least the first seven yeah and so I, and then after uh he went home i watched like two episodes and then i went to bed and then i was like i gotta finish this show i watched the last episode i, I just think the last episode is so fucking sad dude it's so depressing. Yeah, it's it's sad, but like the scares in this show are just amazing. Well, e- even it just has you on the edge of your seat, and then when you start connecting things, like ah, uh, I mean, we did a we did a podcast about it. So if you guys haven't watched that podcast, tune into that. Check that out. Just the link will be in the description. I hope. I start talking about that, but um, my cousin was telling me that if you really pay attention in some scenes, you actually see real ghosts. Yeah, I heard that too. Yeah. Um, and I really want to. I really want to do that, just to see where they're at. That'd be really cool. Um, I looked them up, um, like spoiler wise, and some of them are just like you're. It's in plain sight, but when you're watching the show, you don't see it. Like it's just right behind the characters. So it's it's really interesting. Uh, a few of them, when you're watching, because I've seen it like three times now, um, mostly just for the hidden things and the hidden symbolism and stuff. It's freaking genius. I love. It's like probably one of my favorite recent horrors that's come out. Yeah, uh, I remember too. We were watching one episode, and remember when they were doing a flashback as kids, and I called it out. Like there was like this, they're in the kitchen, but there's this pantry, and you just see someone standing there. Yes, like behind a, a, a window, right? Yeah, and I yeah, that one freaking got me. I immediately called it out when I watched. I'm like, do you see that shit? Yeah, it's crazy. Uh, it was just you just see the person standing there, and they don't really like try to like make it obvious or like try to zoom in on it or try to like show it or anything it's just like there yeah and it's one of those things where you're just like well, what the hell like obviously there's the obvious ones like but then there's those ones that are just like wow yeah they just throw you off guard uh, another one that kind of creeped me out and you called and you had told me about it is the scene where they show the statue looking one way and oh yeah the next scene it's looking the next the other yeah, way I yeah i didn't notice that uh that was cool um but i i still think to this day at least as of right now that show has one of the greatest jump scares Oh, the the car scene. The car scene was just a fantastically <laughs> well jump scare, because I think I was watching it in my room, and you had told me like, there's gonna be a jump scare coming up, and I guarantee you, it's like one of the best jump scares. I'm in my room and it's dark, and I'm eating the food. I'm watching it, and I go on my phone for a bit, and I like put my phone down. All of a sudden, right as I put my phone down, the jump scare happened, and I like nearly almost fucking threw my plate in the air. So I was <laughs> not, ex- I was not expecting it. Didn't weren't you watching that one with Grandma Celine? Yeah, I was watching that with my grandma, and so our w- that's when we shared a room, so our beds were parallel with each other, so she was just laying there on her side with her dog, a little four-pound chihuahua, uh, right, like, by her legs, and so that jump scare happened, and she fucking launched the chihuahua <laughs> off the bed, and she just screamed. Oh, poor chihuahua. She was, like, she was just yelling, like, what the fuck, what the fuck, like, I had to pause it. Uh-huh. It was so funny, but that, that jump scare is so classy it's not cheap whatsoever because there's those cheap jump scares that i'm just like not really yeah that one was just really freaking good like, like they didn't even happened. build it like that's the best part i think was that yeah. like you're so invested in the conversation that's occurring that yeah like exactly. usually like they're building the jump scare and you like you feel it that one no it's just le- left field yeah for real it literally especially because of the conversation like just the tension building and it's like oh shit where's this gonna go and then that happens, it was just really, really good. Yeah, uh, I, I really, like I said, though, I really enjoyed this. The symbolism is awesome. And I, I'm really excited to see uh, what the next season brings to us. Um, I think this was just an announcement that it did get renewed. So they're probably in really pre-production. So I yeah. wouldn't I wouldn't expect until next year. Hopefully, you know. Hopefully, Early next year, I would you say. You know, that'd be nice. Next, next year, October, would probably be a good, good time or September. Not even, are you talking about 2019? 
twenty twenty. Twenty twenty. I wouldn't say October. I'd say like the beginning of the year, maybe. Twenty twenty beginning. Maybe like March or April. I could see. Okay. Um, my question is though, is it going to be the same cast, or are they? Is it going to be like American Horror Story where they use like the same casts and they just give them different roles? Um, because I know the the lady who wears the gloves. Her name's Kate Segal. Yeah. In real life, <laughs> um, she's actually married to the uh, showrunner of that. Of that oh, really? show. I think either the showrunner or so, he's like someone that is important. But yeah, they're married in real life, and that's why I think she got one of the roles. But she was actually really fantastic. Oh, I, I don't think I would not change anything in that show. Yeah, that's uh, like a really good show. Sammy also brought up a, another good theory as we were talking about the other day, and it, it was uh, it was something that I, I think they should do. It'd be pretty cool. Um, what if they do a season based off all the books that the brother wrote? Yeah, that'd be sick if they did a book on all the books Stephen wrote. Yeah, like that'd be cool. That would be I interesting. That. that would be very interesting. I would like to see that as well. And it'd be a cool way to bring back the cast. Yeah, even if it's just yeah. for like an episode or two. Yeah, yeah. Um, um Bly Manor is actually. I'm doing some research on my other screen. It's actually uh, based off of another book, um, just like Haunting was. So this one's based off of The Turn of the Screw. Uh, which was written in 1898. So that seems I'm probably going to check that out and see what it's about, and then connect the dots when it comes out and see. For sure, yeah, for sure. Like that. Yeah, that'd be uh, cool, and then we can probably talk a little bit more about that again uh, as we hear more news. But uh, be sure to turn into the Milestone Podcast because uh, as more news comes out, we will keep you guys informed, of course, as to what's going on with the show, when some release dates are, first trailers, first reactions. Um, very much the last thing we're going to talk about on the podcast today is uh something that uh, uh at least i watched uh one of my favorite movies horror movies of 2018 which was a quiet place quiet place um a very good horror movie highly recommend it uh we'll probably watch it one of these days yeah uh, I, haven't, I mean i haven't seen it because i was terrified to watch it because all of i know it was gonna be really quiet in the theater and the yeah. loud parts yeah yeah um but we'll watch it one of these days uh but uh, it had just got confirmed John Krasinski, the writer-director of the first one, who also plays, of course, Jim on The Office, uh, is coming back to direct the sequel. Um, he did an amazing job, and I am very disappointed that this movie did not get nominated for any Academy Awards. Yeah, I mean, it's really difficult. I mean, considering, obviously, last year you had Get Out, who was just another phenomenal movie. Um, and I, I haven't seen A Quiet Place, so I really can't judge the quality of the film, but I know a lot of people that, are, that have seen the movie regard it very highly. Um, and so, yeah, I mean, I guess it is kind of disappointing. Uh, you know, the Academy, obviously, that's another episode in itself about how it needs to the modernize Academy, itself. Yeah, the Academy needs to modernize itself to get, like, new people. Because, I, I mean, don't get me wrong, a lot of the movies that they they nominate for the Academy Awards deserve the academy awards oh definitely and i'm not talking shit about them making the wrong decisions i'm just saying there's other movies out there that also deserve academy awards and i don't know why they haven't gotten them even if it isn't a best picture nom you know nomination like at least best screenwriting or best director yeah. or something you know like the very least but um that's tomorrow too the academy awards as of this recording it, this when this episode has come out though that's already happened and uh one of seven or eight movies won the fucking best picture Put your guess on it now. My guess, uh, best picture. What's nominated? I'm going to say, do uh, you know all the nominations? Let me check it out. I'm going to say... I don't want to say Black Panther, even though like I want that to win. No, I think that's I think that's what everyone wants to see win. That, like... But I'm going to say it's between Bohemian Rhapsody or... Um, I'm gonna say my choices are gonna be between Bohemian Rhapsody, Black Klansman, or Black Panther. Those are my three choices. But if I, I had to choose one, if I had to choose one out of the three, I'm gonna go Bohemian Rhapsody. I'm gonna take I'm gonna take one that you didn't mention. I'm gonna take the favorite. The favorite? Yeah. Which one was that one? Who was in that one? Was that? Ah, uh, let me see. I'm trying to think of remember who was in that movie. I know it's like a movie about like a queen of England. Okay. Um. No. Okay, I have the list. It's uh, Black Panther, Black Klansman, Bohemian Rhapsody, The Favorite, Green Book, Roma, A Star Is Born, and Vice. I would love to see A Star Is Born win. But yeah, I, I would I really, too. But, but I think I, The Favorite's gonna win. However, Star is Born, I think they kind of screwed Bradley Cooper out with the whole Best Director thing. Oh, he wasn't. He's not nominated for Best Director? No. 
Scott. Wow. Yeah. He poured his heart into that film. Yeah, he did. A very good movie. Um, I would be surprised if that took it, though. I'd be surprised, too. Uh, I feel like it's going to be like a lot of people like All the Land wanted that to win. Yeah. I think A Star is Born is like the underdog. Yeah. Yeah, definitely. Definitely. They came out in a really good year for film. Yeah. Um, personally, I'd like to see Black Klansman win. Uh, I thought that one was just really, really good. And the ending just fucking punches you in the face. Like, how the issues that they described back then are still ongoing today. Um, Because, like, when you think of it, you're like, oh, that's so long ago. We've developed so much. But it's like, no, we really didn't. So that's my vote. And I just thought it was really brilliantly directed. It was funny. The acting was phenomenal. Um, It's likely to do it again. Fucking genius, yeah. Um, Final one, though. I'm going Bohemian Rhapsody. Bohemian? What are you going for? The favorite? Yeah, I'm going to take the favorite. All right. Let's see what wins tomorrow. And uh, one of us is right. One of us or all of us are wrong. Watch it be like Roma. Roma. Oh, Roma may win. I haven't even seen that. It's on Netflix. And I have no interest in seeing it. I wanted to watch it, but I just haven't found it. Stars Born. We, uh, yeah, I I just bought that on Watch it tonight. Did you, uh, Redbox it? Yeah, just Redbox. I saw it in theaters. Um,. But I really wanted to see it again. Just I don't know, man. I mean, he looks very into Anthem back there. I don't know if you're going to be watching it tonight. <laughs> I have my own room. I'll watch it in there. Okay. <laughs> All right. But uh, nevertheless, back to the topic. John Krasinski coming back. I'm very excited for that. A Quiet Place 2. I want to see more about the monster, and I want to see if it's going to take place on another family or if we're going to pick right back up where we left off from the first one. I won't say anything because you guys haven't seen it, but... The F, the the ending of this one left off for a big cliffhanger. So no, definitely. I I know. That I've, I've heard about what happens at the end. Okay. Well. All right. Well, that is gonna do it for the Mindless War podcast this week. Did my mic go? No, it didn't. Okay. Good. We're good. Uh, um, thank you for Celine for being on the show today. Thank you for yes. having me. Thank you. Thank you. We got a little introduction of the beautiful and the very talented Celine. Wait, did you have? I heard you didn't you have a question for us? Oh, no, I just had a sneak-in eating ass. Oh. Oh, okay. <laughs> Are you talking about what I think you're talking about before the show? Yeah, no, she texted me that she had a question for us, so I was like, oh. I think for me in specific, and I kind of looked at that question, and I was just kind of sad. No, I was going to, um, no, I was supposed to ask if you guys brought up any character if they eat ass, but I thought I'd get rid of it, because I know Chucky does. <laughs> <laughs> yep. Uh, that just turned unexpectedly, huh? Yeah. an ass. That's my favorite word to say during uh, playing games, as we've come to know, huh? Yeah. Uh, Eddie called me out on it. Uh, Resident Evil 2 live streams. we got to bring those back. we got to yeah. finish that game. got to finish it. Because we're only halfway through it. Oh, wow. We have a lot more to go. Well, I mean, halfway. We're almost done with Leon's. we got to do the whole other story. Though. Oh, yeah, that's true. And then the, I, my cousin was telling me after the game's over that when you play it on New Game Plus, it's like a whole different game. There's like bonus shit and shit, like extra missions and shit that you can only play on new games. So, but nonetheless, guys, thank you for uh, listening or watching the Mindless War podcast. I am your host, Anthony. It's your boy Sam. And that was our beautiful guest, Celine. My name Jeff. My name Jeff. Uh, thank you guys for watching the podcast, and we will see you guys next week. Bye.